At the core of this conversation is a conversation from a workshop entitled, What is Cybernetics? I'm not going to try to explain what cybernetics is. Smart question man. is for you. I myself don't worry too much about what it is, but I often get the question from people, what is that thing that you're going to? What is the thing? Then I always start with the kibernos, the, the derivation of the word, and that seems to be a nice entry point, that it's how do we steer things, how do we steer our lives or steer our, our systems. Well, if you want a definition of cybernetics, you can get it from Norbert Wiener, which is the study of communication and control in animals and the machine. I see cybernetics as providing a general theory of the informational domain, whereas physics provides a general theory of the material domain. So physics explains matter-energy relationships, cybernetics explains control and communication activities. What is cybernetics? Science of regulation, governance, feedback, and causality. Regulation, governance, feedback, causality. Regulation. Causality of causality. Wiener and McCulloch and Heinz and several others at the beginning had been very interested in the philosophical applications of cybernetics, but not very much was done about them early on. And that took until about, I think, the late 60s, before things like that came out. That, if you like, then became the birth of second-order cybernetics. What cybernetics? An art of steermanship. The way that you steer the ship, is that control or is that Regulation, that is control, as in decision maker uh, determine exactly what is due to the system, or is regulation, is promoting the system to uh, uh, function itself. First order cybernetics is concerned with mechanisms that you are looking at and that you are constructing and that you are controlling. Second order cybernetics is concerned with the constructor, the observer, and the controller. My take on this is essentially how human beings experience their life and relations. I see it as a, as a meta-discipline, as opposed to interdisciplinary or even trans, but a meta-discipline that also enables a kinds of meta-communication in the sort of Batesonian sense. I disagree with that. <laughs> <laughs> what does it mean to be a trans, inter, or meta-disciplinary subject? Because this is one of the things that allows us to talk to each other from mathematics, design, um, and other disciplines. What um, does it mean to be a trans, inter, or meta-disciplinary subject? I like to remind us on the system scientist Erich Jansch. He analyzed the problem by the grade of integration of research via languages or language sharing. Multidisciplinarity is characterized by a common subject of study, two or more than two disciplines. Each discipline remains in its own language. Interdisciplinarity, there are also two or more disciplines, a common subject, the disciplines in this case interact and they try to learn from another by understanding the other's language. For Jansch is transdisciplinarity, two or more disciplines work together and develop a new language. Meta is a Greek word, we all know it, for above. In the Middle Ages, theology stood above all the other fields. Philosophy, for instance, then was the Ancilla Theologiae, the servant of theology. Analytical philosophy in the 1950s or 1960s uh, regarded itself as a meta-discipline of the other disciplines. In exactly such a sense. And science studies do the same nowadays. I myself regarded cybernetics always as a transdiscipline, not as a metadiscipline, for exactly that reason. There should not be a dominant position. 
Historically speaking, it fulfills all criteria of a trans discipline. It, has its it developed its own specific language. People are coming from different backgrounds in terms of disciplines, and there is a wide field of common interests and applications. I made up another symbol here just on the fly. Th this line with a, with a line through the middle of it means these are opposed to one another a little bit. That's cool. During my masters and I talk about cybernex there and I have to explain that what, what it is uh, at first. It's really hard. So uh, trying to do that, I found something like uh, creating stable descriptions for a change. And then you, you create a, a system that is a stable description of it. And you say that if some perturbation happens and this system don't have variety to deal with it, it just... Um, how do you say, disintegrate or something like this. But actually, what disintegrates is your description of the system. Like, uh, it, it, it's not stable anymore because of it, it changed, you know, and the, the, you had a stable description. The thing changed for another thing. And if and you can describe that in, in a st stable way, it, it's going to be indescribable. Yeah. Like when it gets in the way. Yeah. In response to what is cybernetics? When is cybernetics? Yes. And no more right now. When I'm asked this question, and usually I get asked this question when I explain them on my way to something involving cybernetics, and then the person asks me, the first question I usually get asked back is, do I get to meet Tom Cruise because they think it's Dianetics? <laughs> or they ask me if we still have Walt Disney's head on ice because they think it's chirogenics. My soundbite back is always, it is the art of reflexive questioning of context. Really not concerned of uh, discussing what is cybernetics. I find cybernetics as I go and I find it in and many authors, and I'm not concerned of uh, debating correctness. There's many different perspectives, uh, and they share a language. And I think uh, the most special thing about cybernetics to me is the language. There's notions that come with different perspectives, perspectives that without the language, maybe I wouldn't have found and I wouldn't have used. And uh, they help me to think about myself, to think about the relationship the world that I find uh, um, has to my own intentionality, to my being in the world. And I think to newcomers to cybernetics like myself, this is probably more useful, seeing cybernetics as an open field, as an offer. I like Past's idea of the art and science of the defensible metaphor. Manipulating defensible metaphors. Thank you. The focus is on language. The idea is that we live in metaphors. Cybernetics is the art and science of manipulating those metaphors, Nip manipulating language, manipulating life. When Task says metaphor, he doesn't mean metaphor in the sense of analogy metaphor. He means language. He means living. He means enacting through the words you use. When? I'm, I'm trying to grapple with that. Is Maybe somebody else. My biology is happening now. Your biology is happening now. But we talk about studying biology as though it doesn't happen uh, in any given time. It just happened. It just is. What is question invites or asks for a single answer. This is what science does. It, it, it looks for the absolute explanation. The when is question is asking for a temporary answer. When is the time? When is it right? The when is question invites multiple answers. So every one of these answers, every one of these here is a potential answer at a particular time depending on what the person wants at that time. All of us has a concept of an essence of what it is that we just know. And so I'm wondering what is it that has enabled us to actually have the sense of what cybernetics is all about, because if, if we can recognize that in ourselves, maybe we can activate that in other people outside. There's also the question, what do we want it to be? 